Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 21 plus Bronco Sport that came equipped with the Sync 3 system. This Sync 3 system is not equipped with navigation. So we will be adding our navigation upgrade to this vehicle today. The navigation upgrade will come from 4D Tech custom programmed and configured exactly for your vehicle by your supplied VIN number. It gets installed behind the dash in place of the current SYNC 3 module. We'll be using a few tools today. We'll need a seven millimeter socket, an eight millimeter socket, Phillips screwdriver, seven millimeter nut driver. Small flat blade screwdriver is helpful. And some plastic dash removal tools. The dash removal tools and seven millimeter nut driver are available on our website for your convenience. Let's get started. First, we'll need to remove this cover panel back here behind the screen to expose a few screws that are underneath. We'll do this by using a couple of our dash trim removal tools to get underneath it and pull it up. You wanna use one of the thin edge dash removal tools to get in between, to get an edge up, and then you can work one of the wider ones underneath it to release it. Lift it up and set it out of the way. Next, there's three screws that need to be removed. Behind the screen will be these three silver screws we need to take out. With those three screws removed, this center section has to come out. The screen is clipped into this controls and vent section separately, but it'll also all come out together. So we'll start working around the vent pieces. And pull that out. On the back side of the screen here, there will be two connectors that need to get unplugged. This yellow, dark yellow one here has a little tab right in the top middle that you push in with your nail, and that comes unplugged. And then this larger black one has a tab on the back side here that gets squeezed to unplug that. And then we'll set this screen assembly out of the way. With the screen assembly out of the way, we need to remove these four screws right here. There's two here and two here. You wanna keep these screws in small groups because there are a few different screw sizes in the vehicle. So these little bit longer black ones will keep together. Next, we'll want to release the steering column and kind of pull it out and push down to get the most room we can right here. We'll want to remove this piece of trim panel right here that is just below the instrument cluster. It kind of unsnaps up and out. So we'll pull up on it. And pull back. And it just kind of rests there because there's a piece of vinyl between it and the steering wheel to fill the gap. The next thing we'll need to do is take out the two screws that are back in here. You can see it right at the tip of my finger there. And then there's another one on the other side. So we're going to remove those two. You might have to try a couple different angles to get in here and get to the screws. With the six screws removed that were holding in this upper panel, 
Next, we need to remove the upper panel. It goes all the way around here. Just be careful of some thin spots in the panel and that you don't stress those spots removing it. Slide this panel out. And on the back side of this start switch, there's a clip. The release is on the top side. We'll push that with our finger and unplug it. And you see that connector? with the release on the top and unplug it. And we'll set this aside. Next, we need to take out two seven millimeter screws that we exposed in this opening by removing this whole panel. These are directly above the heater controls inside of there. Next, we need to remove a few pieces in the center console to gain access to behind this panel here. Ultimately, we're working towards getting behind the heater controls where the module is located that we're replacing. So first, this control panel here needs to come up and get removed. You'll wanna pry at the front first. And once the front's released, the back slips out. Under this panel is a few connectors that need to get removed. For this one here, you push this little release tab in front of the gray lever, flip the gray lever all the way. And pull the connector out. This one here will push the tab where my finger is, right there, and unplug that. And then this one, the tab is facing this way. So I'm pushing that with my thumb and unplugging that. And we can remove this panel and set it out of the way. Next, we need to remove the two side panels off of the console. This one side panel here down underneath the dash has a trim panel to be removed, and underneath it, an eight millimeter screw to be removed. With that single screw removed, we can start to pull these side panels off. You'll hook an edge up here and start to pop them off. They go all the way back here to near the seat belt. You can just keep sliding your fingers in there Once you have it released, lift the panel up and out. And then we'll do the driver's side as well. Now I have a moving blanket laying on the ground next to the vehicle to place all these larger panels to get them out of the way. Next, to get this panel out, we need to remove the seven millimeter screw on each side of it. There's a silver one here and a silver one on the other side.
Okay, with the silver screws removed, we'll lift up this panel. And on this side of the console, there's a single gray connector here that needs to get unplugged. But there's a push pin holding it here too. So we'll use our, we'll unplug it. And then we gotta pull out on that push pin and use our pry tools to get it released. Once that's released, we'll need to unplug this USB connector here. It'll be a little bit easier to do some of this stuff than you're seeing here because I'm holding the camera with one hand and disconnecting with the other. Next, we need to remove the little piece of trim panel that's underneath these controls to expose some screws. With that removed, we'll take out the two seven millimeter screws underneath. These two screws are the same as these two that came out of the top here, so they can be set together. So in order to get this trim panel out that's here, we need to remove the one that's next to it here, and it kind of all overlaps over. So we're going to pop this side trim panel out. We're going to pop this side trim panel out and then we're going to pull this trim panel out here. With this panel pulled out, we'll unplug this headlight switch here. And what I like to do while I'm working on it is I'll push this little tab and get the headlight switch out of the panel and plug it back in and let it hang here. That's because it is at certain points, the vehicle defaults to auto headlights while it's off and it'll do a continuous ding till you reset it while you have the vehicle apart. So that just gives me the switch to be able to reset that. Also with a lot of these panels, and this is, this is most Fords, these little plastic push pins that go in here and they go in the back side of the panel that we took out, they'll tend to pop out while you're removing the panels pretty normal. You just want to gather them up and snap them back into the panel before you put the panel back in. Now that, that trim panel is removed, there's two seven millimeter bolts down here. We can finally remove this center section here with the heater controls. We can do this by starting to pull out at the bottom and work our way around. Once you got a little bit of the top to release, it comes out pretty easy. I do like to bring in a piece of cloth into the vehicle certain places like this where the controls might be resting down on hard plastic you can use that to protect the surface next we'll need to unplug the three plugs that 
are on the back of the controls here. This top little one, we push the tab and slide it out there. And then both of these have a tab underneath that you push to slip it out. This one's kind of the hardest to squeeze. So you'll just have to squeeze it with your fingers and pull it out. Once you get those three connectors, we'll move this out of the way. Next, we need to get this metal box out of the way here. The module that we're trying to get to is behind it. So we need to disconnect everything. You, these two antenna cables got little tabs on the top you push and then unplug. And then the gray and black connectors got little tabs on top, push and disconnect. Once you got that, you need to release these clips on the face of the radio by using the pry tool and pulling out on them. Now we'll take out the four seven millimeter screws holding the radio unit in. With the screws out, We'll pull this metal box out of the opening. And set it out of the way. Next, we need to remove three screws on a bracket back here. There's one here on this angle, one here on this angle, and one straight back. These three screws and the ones from the radio box are the same size so they can get grouped together. Now we'll drop this, pull out on this bracket and drop the module down. This is the module that we need to remove and replace. The cabling is a little short on it. So there's a black USB connector here. The release is all the way up on the top edge in the back. I'm gonna push that and unplug it and get it out of the way. That's kind of the shortest one. There's a total of four connectors. We removed that black USB one. Now we need to remove these two blue ones right here. They're the most difficult, but also the most delicate. So you do want to be careful. There's a little, on this one here, there's a little release tab in the front we'll push. This is where your little screwdriver comes in handy. So once we push that tab, you can kind of put the screwdriver in between the body connector and the cable connector and work it up and out. If you see, the screwdriver push it out pretty easy once we release the tab. Do not force any of these connectors. If it's not sliding out easy, it's not released. This one has a release tab between the blue connector and the body of the unit. I'm gonna squeeze that with my finger and I'm gonna put my screwdriver right at the base there and work it out from both directions. As I said, do not force any of these connectors. If they're not sliding out easy, they're not released. Once we have those out, we can expose this large 54 pin connector here. This works just like the one that was under the shifter. Push the release tab, flip the gray lever all the way, and pop it out. And then we can take this whole module out on the bracket. Next, we need to exchange the brain that's on this bracket with the one that came from 4D Tech. So we need to remove the three Phillips screws.
It's easiest to exchange this out outside of the vehicle. I simply did it in here so it was in view of the camera. If you choose to do it in here, you know, none of this is exposed trim, so the bracket isn't really gonna hurt it, but these are finished outside trim, so you don't wanna scrape those up. Next, we're gonna take this, slip it back in the opening, so this is gonna to go towards the back. The easiest thing to do is take these, this end and send it in there first and start reconnecting everything. The 54 pin connector, we slip that. In the opening there, make sure the lever is all the way open. Push until the lever moves on its own and then clip it in place. As modules wake up and fall asleep in the vehicle, we just disrupted the data bus by plugging in a new module. Um, it's giving me a parking brake fault on the cluster. Completely normal, nothing's wrong. It's just giving you that fault because right now there's no parking brake switch in the center console connected. All faults will clear once the vehicle's back together. So then we'll reconnect everything here. And you wanna make sure so this blue connector here has a 90 degree on it. This is the one in the back corner here. Make sure that that is pushed all the way in until it clicks. Everything is all the way in until it clicks and sits flat. And then lastly, this black USB connector. So three small connectors and one big connector out and make sure all four are back in. Once we have that, we'll push this back up in place. There's little tabs there that kind of hold the bracket up long enough for you to get the screws in. And we'll replace the screws. And then we'll take the metal radio box and put that back in the front. Make sure the connectors are facing down, yellow and black one on the driver's side. Make sure all your cables are out here and nothing is pinched and everything moves freely. And then we'll replace the four screws. We'll push these holders back in each bracket and plug everything back in. So black and gray connector, yellow, small black connector, and that's all reconnected there. Next, we'll start reassembly and we'll put this main panel in that's in front of the radio that's got the HVAC controls. So we'll put our cloth back down. And take our three connectors and reconnect those. As you're reconnecting stuff, make sure it goes all the way in until it clips in place. With that panel in place, we'll put the four screws back in, two top, two bottom. These were shorter screws with taller heads on them. And then we'll replace the other understeering column panel. We'll unplug this headlight switch, snap it back into the panel, plug it back in, and then snap this panel back in place. This panel is probably the 
hardest one to get back in just alignment wise because it hooks behind this edge panel here and one part of it has to go under the side panel. So you just gotta take your time and work it into place. Next, we'll reassemble the console. So we need to plug back in the USB cable into the USB hub. And then plug back in the gray connector on this side and push the push pin back in. Once we've done that, we want to replace the silver screw on each side. Then we'll put the side panels back in as well. These you want to be careful sliding them down. Get them all lined, pushed forward. Once you have a couple of the push pins that are right in front of your face, easy to align, you'll know the panel's aligned and you can simply push the rest of them back in. And then we'll replace the driver's side as well. With that panel back in place, we'll replace the eight millimeter screw down here in the corner. Now we just need to replace the shifter area of the console by plugging the three connectors back in. Make sure that this lever is all the way open connectors facing the right way push it in until the lever starts to move use the lever to pull the connector the rest of the way in gray connector here black connector here as I've stated before with all connectors make sure they're firmly pushed in until they click in place you hook these plastic hooks in the back there first and then snap it down Next, we'll bring in the upper dash panel and reinstall that. We'll set it in place and plug back in the start button first. Pull these two cables to the opening. This one will come through the upper opening and this one will come through in between there. Pull this panel kind of out of the way at the base of the steering wheel column so we can kind of get this set in place. This corner kind of has to go under that dash piece. And I think we're there. With that in place, we'll replace the six screws we took out earlier. There's the four here, and then the two on each side of the steering column. those screws back in place we'll take this panel here in front of the steering column and you'll kind of tilt it down push it up over and then snap it down into the opening so it kind of hooks in the front edges and then swings down to snap in Okay, and then we'll take the screen vent assembly. We got the two connectors that get reconnected on that. We got the large black connector down there and this yellow one here. 
and then we'll push that back into place. And the three screw holes will line up there and we'll replace those screws. And lastly, we'll snap this trim panel up here back in place. Now that the navigation upgrade is installed, we'll turn on the system. This upgrade will come custom programmed for your vehicle based on the VIN number you provided. Therefore, all your features and settings and functions that you are used to from your non-navigation system will carry over to the navigation. The home screen will now be arranged slightly differently with your audio stuff on the right and your maps will be on the left. You'll also have the navigation icon added in the row of icons at the bottom to access the navigation functions. Now you see how to install the navigation upgrade for Sync 3 in the 21 Plus Ford Bronco Sport. I am Scott from 4D Tech. Thank you for checking out our video.